Kathy, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Well, I really enjoyed the picture up there of Howard in between Barbara Walters and Mark Stewart. Uh, yeah, right? I'd like to know the story <laughs> behind it, what that shoot was like. So, uh, so what brings you to the show today? Talking about your, uh, what is it, fifth season of? Talking about um, of your season five stuff? of the multi Emmy Award winning Kathy for My Life on the D list, as well as my live dates in Boston, Westbury, Long Island, and Montclair, New Jersey. Nice. You excited to be back? Of course. Out with Howard and the guys? Absolutely. I love Howard. I love the whole game. Cool. All right. Tell us the tall woman's couch. Kathy Griffin is uh, the host and star of My Life on the D-List, premiering this Monday night at 10 o'clock on Bravo. Kathy's show's been on Bravo now for how many seasons already? Kathy, hi, Kathy. How, how many seasons has that show been on already? We're starting thought? season five on Monday. Did you think it was going to be that successful? And win two Emmys? Yeah. No, I did good not. Good for you. Wow, congratulations. Thank you, girl. By the way, you know, you're doing everything you can to show off your body. I saw a picture of you recently in the tabloids in a well, bikini. Well, I saw hot, sexy Denise Richards in the hall in that sexy red dress. Don't you get resentful? So you just went Very in and took bitter. off all your clothes. Yeah, don't, yeah. You, yeah, yeah. Don't, you get, don't you get bitter? Like, a, a girl like bitter. that comes in. She and, is my nightmare. Yeah, because we, we she <laughs> won us over. You were hot. She you were going to be the hot in the hall. Like, I could have been the hot chick yeah, for like two seconds. Yeah. The hall, and, and then that in. bitch comes in with that red dress. <laughs> That's how I felt when Hugh Jackman came in. <laughs> no. I haven't thought of Hugh Jackman as that bitch in the red dress so many times, girl. You're, you're yeah, working. and then yeah, I'm I'm trying. I'm working out. I'm doing the best I can. And then Denise Richards comes in and fucks my shit up, yep. just like that. That's right. right. That's right. That's exactly right. But well, let's just do the same. Let's just do the same interview with her. How big is Richie Sambora's cock, Kathy? <laughs> you know, it makes me sore. So at first it's exciting, and after a while, it's a lot of astroglide. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. When the guy's that big, it's hard to handle. At first, it's it's a party, and later on, it almost can lead to resentment. <laughs> i got to tell you something funny. What? You were hosting the New Year's Eve on CNN. I'm, which, a, I'm a hardened newsman. Yeah. Kathy was hired to host New Year's Eve. They decided to do something fun New Year's Eve and have her out in Times Square on CNN. And you actually got on and used profanity. And I don't know, did that cost you this season's uh, New Year's Eve show on CNN? Were they I mad? I think their ratings were very good, so I don't know. But you know, you have to say who the co-host was. Who was the co-host? Anderson Cooper. Right. Okay. So you guys were doing the show together. Right. And you kind of lost it because someone in the crowd at Times Square was heckling you. Right. Did you know the heckler was Benji? who uh, writes for our show. Is that true? Yes. Benji? It, yeah, it was Benji. <laughs> Why is Benji trying to ruin me? Benji, what happened? You said you weren't trying to ruin her, but there was something going on that day. I, it was, at that point, this is how I realized it was me. It was about 12.50. New Year's had passed. Right. right. And uh, I, I ran to, I was at my friend Marianne's, and I ran to Times Square. I was like, oh, I'll try to try to say hi to Kathy. <laughs> And uh, there was only about 10 people left because the police... Had, yeah, it was pitiful. Police right. had cleared everyone out. Mm -hmm. So I was... I, I don't remember exactly what I was screaming. I was just like, hey, Kathy, it's me, Benji. Trying right. to say hi to her. Right. Like she knows you. And, and then she was... So well, well, I didn't hear this until it was on TV. Benji caused you to forget that you were on CNN and respected news channel. I was on channel. an international news channel, <laughs> news outlet, with a Vanderbilt. Now, when something like that happens, yeah. do they immediately come to you and go... <laughs> Kathy, for they want quite. a statement. They want a statement. Yes. Yeah. That, 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 the producer say, "Listen, we're CNN. You can't be yelling about guys' dicks on our channel." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did you, what were the repercussions? Okay, did, here's how it went down. Okay. First of all, I could have said something worse. Like, I could have said, you know, um, I could have kicked you in the cunt, but I didn't want to lose a good boot. Like, right. I could have been worse. <laughs> or you right. could have said what you said to Benji, to Anderson Cooper. Right. The, which would have been worse. There's right. a, or I could have done it in a different language. And so what happened, you know, is uh, the minute, first of all, they said we had gone to commercial. And I really just said it to try to make Anderson laugh and stuff. And then it was a few seconds later that one of the producers said my earpiece, oh my God, that went out live I think. exactly so right. i turned to anderson and i said am i fired and he said no and i go are you fired and he goes no <laughs> so no harm no foul yeah and then i said you can say dicks on cnn and he said oh yeah oh, yeah we talk to dick cheney all the time is yeah. that what he no, said no. yeah no and so there were no repercussions it was not a big deal well i think the ratings were good and i got in a little trouble but i was um a youtube sensation which i've never had a youtube like million views susan boyle moment you know what i'm amazed about you mm. it, it, is you will take like like when you were on that TV show with Brooke Shields, it was a yeah. very successful show. You were on stage when your stand up act, mm -hmm. and you made fun or you talked about some intimate things about Brooke Shields, yes. and it cost you a friendship with her. Yeah, I mean you don't see her anymore, and yet 
celebrities still keep inviting you into their lives because you you have I mean you're public about it. If you go to a celebrity's house, you're going to talk about it, right? Yes. Nothing is off limits. Nothing's off limits. And last night I went to an award show. Right. Okay. First of all, it was called the Gracie Awards. Have you heard of this, Robin? No. It's like a women celebrating women. Oh. It was badge tastic. Right, I so, taped it. So. <laughs> yeah. So the first person to come out is Maya Angelou. Now I'm just going to go on record, and this is not going to be popular. She is insufferable. <laughs> she's I know a she's a genius. <laughs> I know she's lauded. You're the only one who knows she's a genius, by the she's way. She's insufferable. I know. And you're... I had to stand, and everybody was standing, and Gail was there. Right. I, by the way, it was my first Gail run in. Oh, yeah. I've had Gail know. run ins. Gail likes me. Gail King likes me. Oprah's best friend. I, it's very Oprah's strange. boyfriend? Oprah's best boy, friend. <laughs> boy, friend. You don't know anything about Come that. On now. Come on now. I'm just making a little... They, yes. they don't even I live think in Dr. This... Angelo said that to me. If I recall, I seem to overhear Dr. Angelo but, say but that. But they don't even live in the same city. How could you make that? You know what? Leap. It's like the thorn birds. It's a forbidden <laughs> love that knows no boundaries. You know you Kathy, want to date a rich guy, and the rich guy never wants to be in the same city. As Kathy you. hits on something that is so friggin' true. Because I watch that Oprah show sometimes, and that Maya Angelou's hauled out, and that's Oprah's hero. Right. And she's into poetry and all this stuff. Yes. And she starts to recite in very big language, the essence of life <laughs> is The to tree has a leaf that blows. Wrap it up, lady. Yeah, right. <laughs> Wrap it up. But yet, everyone buys into her. And, and, and I Clinton know, loves her. I don't and, think that Oprah created this, because who knew her You think that Oprah? she's just like some lady that like worked at the yeah, supermarket, yeah. and Oprah said, okay, I'm she's a Nobel Prize. I'm going to make you a star. Well, right. Clint, Clinton wants to fuck her. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> she's got a pussy. So you went to this thing, and Maya Angelou was there speaking. Yes, yeah, so we all stand up and oh. there's people crying and then everyone afterwards has <laughs> You're to do crying, it. All right. I was loving it because I got a show tonight in Montclair, New Jersey. Yeah. And I'll be recapping it in a uh, candid fashion. My but buddy Vinny will be there. Oh, everybody there is Vinny or Tony in Montclair, New Jersey. Go ahead. Um, so, yeah, so she comes out and then every presenter after her has to say, I'm so honored that I was in the same room. It's like the Pope. Doctor. Why Angelou? And I'm like, unless she's doing an exam. Enough with the doctor. Yeah, yeah, I right. get is she it. A doctor up? Is she the same doctor that I Bill Cosby? I would like a pap smear, frankly. If she's <laughs> Bill Cosby, they call him doctor now, right. too. Is that the same right. kind of doctor? Unless I'm... you've got, you know, the stethoscope, no. <laughs> no more I'm doctoring. Sorry. No. You're absolutely right. She's more no. like Dr. Dre. Yeah, now there's a doctor. <laughs> That's a doctor. I would Actually, go to him if I had a, maybe a murmur. By Oprah. the way, how did they get her in there? Because I was at an event that she was at, and literally they wheel her in. She goes in on wings. <laughs> they have wings from heaven. Has Oprah gone too far, in your opinion? Of course. She's lost her mind. <laughs> what? Why? All right, come on. <laughs> what has she done? First of all, she's got a messiah complex more than God. Like, God the God has to tell her to take it down a few notches. Right. <laughs> I, she governs by fear. Right. So while I worship her, I am scared shitless of her. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I've been on the Oprah show once, like many shows I've been on once. And what happened when you went on? Did they, well, you know, it I didn't told... Go well? It went great, but then I did my act, and I told the behind the scenes, and then, you know, it was my last appearance. But I do have the picture of myself with Oprah, and if my house ever burns down, it's the first thing I grab. Do you think you're committing career suicide in a way? Because getting on Oprah is a big deal. If you a had big just, deal. If you had kept your mouth shut about what goes on behind the scenes at Oprah, yeah. you'd, you'd be on the Oprah show regularly right. and probably have huge book deals and all kinds of things right. going on, but right? But, you know, I don't. Look, my problem is I don't have enough causes. you got to have right. a cause. You know, I don't care about people. Why were you on the Oprah show in the first place? <laughs> I was on there. Oh, this is very controversial. I was on there with the extreme makeover people talking about plastic surgery. Right. Which, you know, I've had a little work done. Yes. No. And I know, it's a shock. Um, <laughs> I like to call it dental work. And anyway, you know who was on that day? Who? The guy who allegedly killed Kanye's mom. Like, he was the surgeon oh, expert. that was the That doctor? guy, Jan something? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So then I got calls when poor Kanye's mom passed away and they were saying, well, what did you think of that doctor? I said, I didn't, I didn't get to meet him, but so... They were like showing tape of him on that show yeah. after she died. What have you? So, are you done with plastic surgery? Are you? I think so. I mean, you're on a mad quest to have the perfect everything. Yeah. And it's. It, it, do you find that this plastic surgery has made you happier? That now not that at all. It didn't it really do anything. It was. I mean, you know, <laughs> it you made you little, funnier. Since I last. Did, all right. If it made me a little funnier. Since I'll I last saw you, did you get a little bit of facelift or something? No, nothing since you last saw me. A little eye lift or something? Because no? I see the eyes are very almond shaped. I mean, maybe oh, that's your natural beauty. Here. Nothing. 
nothing on her. She's got, uh, you know, no, the eyelashes. I mean, yeah, uh. I got the Botox and all that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got fake eyelashes on. I mean, I'm a drag queen. You know, I show up with a week's worth of makeup on. But where did all the weight go? You have slimmed down. Yes, I've really, really slimmed down. Yeah. yeah you look good. You really oh, do. Yeah. She lost 220 pounds, her husband. And that's, <laughs> that's right. Do you think because, Very quickly. Be, because you lost your husband, do you think that's what uh, got you crazy to yes. get the body in shape and yeah. all of that? And you're having sex with new guys. I'm having sex with new guys. I'm on the market. Right. So, you know. Oh, really? You, right. So you want to. Yeah. You, and by the way, you are a fun girl in bed, too. And guys should know mm-hmm. this about you. What do you mean? I think it's How important. do you know? How do I know? Because I've interviewed Kathy before. And I'll tell you, I'll remind you what Kathy once said okay. to me on this show. I'm going to, I'm going to find it right here. And in my please, notes. can we talk about my two nights at Westbury? Yes. It's Thank great you. having sex with a chick who yells out Maya Angelou jokes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you you said to me that. in June of 2008, the last time you were here. Okay. Um, you said that you like to use KY in bed. You like to mm-hmm. role play in bed. You're willing to finish a guy off with your mouth. And uh, even after he's been inside of you. Yeah. And let me tell you something. Easy, Denise. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I've earned your respect once and for all. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I like a girl who tries hard. But mm-hmm. anyway, so now you became friends with Rosie O'Donnell. I could see you two becoming good friends. Of course. Friends. Well, how did that happen? Were you not well, good friends? No, no. We were we were always friends. But this year on the D-list, the theme is that I'm getting mentors to get me off the D-list. So I have Bette Midler episode one. I have rapper T.I. Let me tell you something about T.I. You got to grab him when you can. Right. Well, you know tell us saying? who he is first. He's a multi Grammy nominated rapper. He's been on the show. <laughs> and he's, he's been on the show. Oh, really? Prison, right? And, well, he's... He's, I like to say, on a hiatus. Yeah, I must right. have been on heroin the day he was on the show because I don't remember. He's in jail right now, isn't he? He He's, went away. Yes, he went away. Good. Because he enjoys the machine guns now and again. Uh, right. But he I feels asked, terrible about it. I asked him about that. I said, T.I., I go, here you got a great life going on. Mm-hmm. And you, you, you know, you, you've got, you, you beat the odds. You got out of the And ghetto. you know he's like the block to bomb. He's got eight kids. Yeah. Yeah. And Jeez. he, and mm-hmm. he, and he's I, and he's young. I, yeah. And I said to him, Robin, you should remember this. I said to him, why would you mess around buying guns? Like he was buying assault weapons. Right. He buying, and I said, I mean, what do yeah, you do? Like what country is he what providing don't you have? arms for? Right. And right. he looked at me and he said, it was the dumbest thing I ever did. And mm-hmm. I know better now, but he said, I got to go now pay for my crime. He's going to yep. go away for like a whole year. I think he went away, Howard. I no, think he's he might on, No, I he's actually he he's actually out. got two months. Yeah. No, he's in. Yeah. Oh, he's in. Yeah, but they, first they gave him a year and a day and right. then somehow he got community service down to two months. That's because okay. he's an A-lister. Yeah. Is he? he? Really I don't is. even know who the hell he is. Okay, I mean, for, when I went to the Grammys, I mean, every, he was the biggest star there. People were losing it to see T.I. Really? T.I. Yes. is a very, very popular, t- uh, top-selling very guy. Pop- right now. And a rapper with yes. eight kids called 60 Minutes. It's I'll, weird. I'll tell you why he got to reduced to two months. Okay. Because he was genuinely sorry. Repentant? Like, repentant. Remorseful. Yeah, you got the feeling that the guy said, I'll right. go do my time, but I really did make a mistake. And Judges yes. like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. they sure do. Mm-hmm. Um, By the okay. way, there's a moment that I do with him on the D-list that will not make the show that I want to tell you about that I thought you might enjoy. Swallowing? Every No, that's in every episode. It's it's in the <laughs> bumper. Um, every episode, I have my celebrity guests do a segment called Will You Take My Call? So I had T.I., and we were at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles in L.A. Right. Of course. Apparently, Chicken and Waffles go together. And so I said very cavalierly, will you call Justin Timberlake? Right. And he said, yes. Okay. So he doesn't tell Justin. He calls him on speaker. Now, you know, Justin doesn't just think he's black, right? Like, right. you know, he thinks he's like from a tribe in the Congo. Right. Like yeah. beyond yeah. Black. He's African. He's not just he is black. He's African. Brother, <laughs> he's Yafet yes. Kodo. Yeah. Yes, exactly. But his dark skinned uncle. He clicks when he talks. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> he put a plate in his lips. Right. He killed a lion. <laughs> so you said to T.I. So I said to T.I., call Justin Timberlake, and he did. And, you know, the other thing is when T.I. calls, I mean, his friends pick up because they right. never know if he's going to not be available. Sure. And so, or shoot them. Right. And so Justin picks up, and he was on speaker, and we taped it for the D-list. I'm sure it'll never be on because I'm sure Justin won't sign the release, but it was the funniest conversation. It was the two of them talking so black <laughs> that after a while, they were just making, like, guttural sounds. <laughs> And Justin, Justin was way blacker than Ti. Right. Ben, and by the end of the, it was like, Yo, man, what's up? What's up? Hey, boy, you boy, what's up? Hey, all right, the holla, you was a holla. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even know how to subtitle it. Right. And then at the very, but they learned to go, kept going, huh, 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 
All right, hi. Oh, hi. that's hilarious. Now, why does Justin Timberlake <laughs> talk like that? I mean, he's a, he's a white he kid. Because he wants to sell records, right. and they have that song together um, called Dead and Gone, which is a big, giant hit. But don't you oh, think I love black it. And he guys... wants the street cred of, yeah. of the T.I. with the machine guns. Don't you think black guys mm-hmm. laugh at white guys who talk like that? They're like, well, they, they, he has no but credibility. But I think talk. Justin probably gets so much hot pussy yeah. and has it around him at all times. And yes. I think like the 50 cents, they might sort of humor him, but sure. there's always going to be hot chicks around Justin. Yeah, so, but 50 always. cents got, gets a lot of hot pussy, as you put it as well, yes, I'm that's sure. True. Now, how did you become friends with the legendary Cher? <gasps> oh, do you that, hear a gay choir of angels? I do. That's a big deal to you. It's huge. You've gotten friendly with her do you, to the By point, the way, who would be your Cher? If you were share? a gay man like me, who would your Cher be? Denise Richards. Well, she was just here. <laughs> oh, okay. You're still coming down off that hot red dress. Anybody who comes in in a hot red dress. I, she does look hot and sexy. It's but, weird. Mine would be Cher. Right. <laughs> So wait a second. Why is Cher such a big deal to you? Because I love her. She's a gay icon, and she's funny, and she has a sense of humor. And, and whenever I hear that an A-lister actually took a joke in the spirit it was in which it was intended, I'm excited. Because so most made, A-listers, not so much. You made fun of her, and she was able to take a good yes. joke. Yes. And how did you meet her? We met through Rosie O'Donnell. Right. And um, I made a trade with Rosie O'Donnell, and I, she wanted to go to an event with Steve Wozniak. Right. And I said, if I hook that up, can you hook up a meet and greet with Cher? And she did. Wow. And did Cher realize that, like, your a goal of hers, that you want to hang out with her, that this would legitimize you in show business in your eyes? And, uh, yes. Okay. So you meet her, and somehow now you've wrangled your way into her home. I, I mean, went there for Christmas Eve. And she's not nervous about that because she knows you're going to talk about her. She it kind of... Not that she doesn't give a shit, but I feel like she's kind of been through so much, all kinds of crazy press. There's really nothing I could say when you're that in she these, hasn't been through. When you're in these people's homes, do they say to you, please, Kathy, don't uh, talk about my right, home. Right, like this but, is off the record. This, right. uh, yeah, I tell them, you know, I can try to agree to off the record, but sometimes if it's funny shit... I, right. I can't stop myself. I mean, Robin, wouldn't you think twice before you invited Kathy to your home? And, uh, she's yeah. never been to my home. No, right, it's not right. a good idea. I, she ain't coming here. No, no and she not ain't a good idea. But in all fairness, no. it was Cher's dream to meet Steve Wozniak. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, Kathy, it was Rosie's dream. <laughs> so, Kathy, you meet yes. Cher and you hit it off with her. Yes. How does she come to invite you to her house? Um, we would, we had been texting for a while and I wish I could say sexting because right. I'd really like to do some sexting like Miley Cyrus, but we were just merely texting. What does that mean? Sexting? Where? Sexting is where Miley Cyrus, right. um, sends a slutty picture of herself to you or one of the Jonas brothers. No kidding. She's done that. <laughs> yes. Go online and look at, there's one where she's like going like that. Yeah. And so, you know, she took the picture herself and it's her in like naughty lacy panties and she's actually picking up her own shirt and chewing it like that. And sends it to a Jonas brother. And the Jonas and, brother says, ooh, that's nice. Can Justin Timberlake take a shot and send it to him? And then Justin says, what's up, motherfucker? <laughs> you want to sex with Cher? You want to send I sexy pictures to her? I, would, I want to sex with whoever will get me the most publicity. I'll give you my text number. Would Artie, you, but I would not, happy to... But you're not physically attracted to Cher, are you? No. No, that's but not what you're But it's more of a publicity, you know. And also, I just like to sext because all the kids are doing it. All right. Now, I noticed when you lifted up your shirt just now, you, yeah. you have a six-pack. Now, what's going on? What are you, in the gym? Are you? Are I'm you, working out and starving. Right. You brought Michelob in here? I'm on the wagon. You Oops, eat, sorry. You eat nothing, right? I don't. Yeah, I'm, I'm hungry and bitchy all the time. Right, but all you look time. good, and that's exactly. what it matters Exactly, that's the important thing. I'm on television. And the boobs are fake, right? No, the boobs are absolutely real. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, because they, mushy. Yeah, I mean, they look... You can uh, see. Yeah, now they I look see great. Them. Yeah, Thank they look you. good. Yeah. So, Kathy, your uh, husband's out of the picture. Yes. And, and I wasn't done with Cher, by the way. So you okay, get into her house. Okay, what else about Cher? I've been to her home. And what happens inside the house? Isn't okay, it like an Aztec temple? We, Yes, it is. I call it um, Share Island. It's a compound. Right. It's not a house. It's a compound. Right. And there's a security uh, gate with like a guard with who's armed. Wow. So I could just die at Cher's house. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I make one wrong move, it's over for me. Right. And then um, usually what happens is we go to her place and uh, she orders from Nobu. She loves Nobu. Do they deliver to our house? You're damn right they do. It's Cher. Wow. wow. It's Cher. Wow. Do they deliver to your house? Uh, no. Are well, you you're kidding? not Cher. You're not Cher. Do you bring a gift? Yes, I brought what gifts. What do you bring to share? Exactly. The, well, she's she's spiritual, which I'm not, but I act like I'm around her. But you bring like a <laughs> scented Zen bullshit Buddhist. She's into all that crap. And then uh, whatever it is, Why I say, not? I got this at Sri Lanka. Kathy not, brings a piece of duct tape for her mouth. Why not I bring, try to see if it'll work. Why not bring a young Asian slave? Oh, <laughs> you know. Or I can at least sext her one first. So when you go over one. there, what is she, is she wearing? Like sexy share outfits? She's all. She has shown me the share closet, yeah. which is oh, a dream come true. I just gasp. And then, but usually no, she's just in sweats 
and no makeup at all. Wow, and just her hanging hair, out. Just hanging, man. Just a couple real chicks. I would think that'd be kind of interesting, but also kind of nerve wracking. Like you have to it be. Is. Do you have to be the court jester? Do you have to sit there and keep Cher entertained? I do enjoy making Cher laugh. Yeah, she likes because she has that voice. Her voice is like a Cher voice. Right. I mean, that's not an affectation. That's her real voice. So you actually go over there. She takes you up to her closet. Part of the fun is to go up to her closet, look at her stuff. Yeah, and then you go down. I get what do you eat dinner or something? We, we usually have dinner in her bathroom. Believe it or not, <laughs> she has a bathroom that's so big it actually has a day bed in it. Wow. And we sit in her day bed in her bathroom and eat Nobu. Huh. You are shitting me. No, I'm wow. not. I shit you not. You eat in the bathroom. We eat in the bathroom. That is the most insane thing and I've I ever know, heard. I know, but I just want to say the bathroom place. is, I mean, honestly, it's at least as big as the studio. Yeah, it's but you don't huge. eat where you shit. Yeah. We don't eat uh, in the WC. Why, no. why have a bed in the bathroom, though? Did you ever ask Cher She that? finds it relaxing, and there's a great view, and I don't know, she just... Uh, well, what about the rest of the place? I'm sure there's views all Oh, yeah, there's the dining place. rooms. And <laughs> Good Lord. I actually, I actually brought, for on Christmas Eve, I brought my mom there. It was a nervous wreck and had to have a lot of wine to calm down. Uh, the box of wine was why, why fully you, tipped. Why did you bring your mom there? Because it was Christmas Eve, and then Cher said, what are you doing, you crazy bitch? And I go, well, I'm with my crazy drunken family. What are you doing? She goes, bring them over. It'll be a fucking riot. And so, sure enough, my mother and my sister and one of my brothers and I drove out to Malibu to the Cher compound. Right. And we, like, hung out. And her mom was there and her sister. And, and you're nervous, you say, because you don't want your mother fucking up your right. relationship with Cher. You right. worked hard to get this. Exactly, and I don't want one box of frenzy to ruin yeah. everything. And you're probably the whole time thinking, "Wow, this is Cher." I remember the her from the Sunny and Cher show, of and, course. Her, and all her hit songs. You and can't all that. forget it, Cher. Yeah. Now, and why does Cher sound like Flo on the show Alice? What is that like? That's she actually, has a very specific way of do speaking. it again. How did she, <laughs> are you crazy, bitch? <laughs> and she, although she says that when I do her, I sound like Walter Brennan. Yeah, you but do. I do. Um, I know. I do a pretty good Walter Brennan by mistake. Now, when you're having dinner. In the bathroom. In the bathroom of chairs are, from like, Nobu. Like, are people walking in serving while she's taking a dump? Or uh... <laughs> um, I, I would probably serve her when she's taking a dump. No, but I mean, if but you have to pee, a... do pe like, you just oh, pee? Can, all right, this is like old school Hollywood, but you might know this name. So one time I was there, and then she gets a haircut. Well, she's sitting there from Jose Iber. I yeah. know that name. Right? The guy with the fake ponytail. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Okay, this is like an old school hair guy like from the Manson for murder days. Like right. he like did every, like the movie Shampoo, I think was partially based yeah, on I him. used to see him on Regis. And, and he had long hair yeah. and a crazy cowboy hat. And yeah. he ju she just sits in the room and he cuts her hair. Well, well, I used to see him who comes in. in. I used to sit next to him at the Giant Games. In the, in the bathroom, <laughs> while he's cutting her hair, they're serving Nobu. Boy, that's yeah. an extravagant that's lifestyle. That's A-list. Yeah, yeah that sure is. <laughs> and then you stay there. You probably stay there. You know when, just when to leave so you're not annoying, Cher. I do. I try to I try to right. have my Colin Powell exit strategy. Does she ever ask you any personal questions, or is it basically more about... Oh, no, it's all about, very personal. No, it's but is it more about her, or is it about you? She's an equal opportunity. I mean, we talk... Okay. She gets down and dirty and personal. What do you really think of Moonstruck? And what oh, about her... I could talk about that all night. And what about Remember her son... Met? And what about her son, Elijah? Blue. Is he still living in the house? I've never met him. I've met Chastity briefly. Right. But no, he's not living at the house. He's not there anymore. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting stuff that you're up to. Yeah, it's extremely exciting. And Listen. a lot of the people on the D-list are like a big time stars. First of all, you know who's on that's... Well, I have two people that are secretly insanely rich. Number one, Su uh, Suzanne Summers secretly right. owns the world. You know that, right? Yeah. In other words, she it's, made it's a, crazy money. She crazy. made a lot of money from her exercise equipment. It's the, and books. It's the thigh master, yeah. and now it's the books. But I mean, she's but one of those no, like she's Springer. She's on those home shopping channels. Yes. Right. All she sells everything: clothes, everything, jewelry, vitamins. You name it. Right. Suzanne Summers has yes. a, a brand. She and Jerry of it. Springer could could rule the world. She's like the money. George Foreman of yes. hot yeah, blondes. Absolutely. Yes. In fact, I've been with her when she's like, "Why didn't I think of that?" Damn grill. You know? <laughs> really? Yes. Are you, uh, you, when you say you're with her, so she's another one that you've wormed your way into her life as well. Yes. And you get to hang out with her and hang I've out at her house. I've been to her compound in Palm Springs. And she's got a compound too. And Gloria Stefan. How's your compound? Oh, Miami Mafia. How, How did you get to Gloria Stefan? Yeah. The Rosie O'Donnell. Uh, Rosie O'Donnell. That's right, the hub of the wheel. She's a wow. main connection. She knows everybody. She does know everybody. Absolutely. I, and she hooks you up. I hope she'll come see me in Westbury in my two nights at the Capital One Bank Teller oh. drive through you, you always read that uh, Rosie and her wife are having problems in the tabloids, but we've spoken uh, with Rosie Exactly. O'Donnell. And I always see Kelly, and yeah. it always looks good. So. And it always looks good. So you think that's a big fake uh, kind of thing, right? Yeah, you know, by yeah. the way, the lesbians are not afraid of a little drama. Right. You know, they all want to get married. Everybody wants to get married, but there's still drama. Yeah, I guess so. So uh, if Rosie wanted to move you in, would you go there? Yeah. You would do it with her? Yes. You would have sex with her? Of course. You would, because yeah. that would further you in show business. I, yeah, and then I would sex a picture of it to Miley Cyrus. <laughs> 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 Listen, Kathy Griffin is very busy. <laughs> Suddenly, she can't even call her show anymore, My Life on the D-List. You have risen above it. In fact, 
you recently, I think, returned to what show that you were banned from? The View? No. I heard that you were allowed back on The View. Oh, Conan yeah. had you on. After 10 years. What was it with Conan? Oh, I have to tell you this. I finally met Spidey. What do you mean? I finally met Spidey. Hi- Heidi and Spencer oh, from yeah. I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Yeah, I just got turned on to that. That's pretty good. Well, yeah. and what are you talking about? So you met Spencer, Toby Maguire? No, Spencer no. <laughs> and Heidi, these guys on, on uh, so I'm a Celebrity, we Get Me Out of Here. We were just talking here. about the from Hills. The hills. Kids. It's these two obnoxious kids. It's all about kids. the Hills. Oh, oh, like they put Heidi the names. Yeah, you know, you know like what we're talking about. Oh, oh, no, yeah. Oh, they call them Spidey? They call themselves like Brangelina didn't come up with them. But they called oh themselves God. Spidey. Yeah. Well, I want to throw up. They're heinous. First of all, I was at, <laughs> good. They are heinous. Right. And I saw them at a big celebrity party, and it was exciting to be there in Malibu. And then when they walked in, I was like, wah, wah. Like, at first I thought it was an A-list party, and then they walked in. I was like, oh, I guess not. Who was there that made you think it was an A-list party? Well, I got to sit with Tina Fey and judge everybody, and that was fun because That's I love her. And right. Kate Hudson and Gary Shandling and... Um, Gary Shanley. Now, what is he up to, that guy? He's kind of in the Malibu Mafia. You know, that whole Malibu posse, it's a, it's a small town, and yet they all, like, you go to a weird dinner party with, like, Gary Shanling, Streisand. The Coveney, right? Yeah, the Coveney. The Coveney's There's in that, yeah. Malibu Mafia. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, but Gary Shan- did Gary Shanling make so much money? Like, he never had a big hit TV show. Like, I'm a big fan of the Larry Sanders show, yeah, but, I, but that was kind but of he, a cult he, thing. he's always been on shows. Though. Like, I mean, right. his Showtime show ran a long time. Larry Sanders ran a long time. Did he make enough money that he can just hang out now and go to parties? That's what he does. And no he kidding. hangs out with, you know, uh, who's his buddies? Warren. Warren Beatty. Yeah, and, Warren yeah. and Annette. No kidding. Yeah. And so you go to this party. So I go to this party thinking I'm really in. Yeah. And then freaking Spidey walked in. And who invited them to the party? Well, because they're on. It's an NBC party and they're on I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. I got so it. So now they're NBC talent and uh, my two Emmys are down the shitter. Were uh, they uh, assholes uh, to you? Of course. What did they do to you? Well, first of all, they walk over and a couple friends of mine, first of all, Tina ditched me. She's like, you're on your own. And then a couple friends of mine were like, this must be a great moment for you. And I honestly just got uncomfortable because <laughs> I, I like to observe these people for, at a distance, but I don't really want to talk to Spidey. I'd rather talk about them behind their backs right. and, Fuck them. and so yeah and so they show up and then he comes over and he, he by the way he dresses like a date rapist he's got like the menendez brother sweater around his he looks like he literally just came from a date rape right yeah. and she watched right and so uh <laughs> they came over and then uh, tell me if i'm too harsh i don't mean to shock on this you show i uh, so they came over and then he goes uh, hey what's uh, just wanted to meet you i think you're awesome i'm a media whore like you uh, I know. And, and then, was, you, then you felt like, oh, man. I know. Yeah, he's in your category. He, he can do an hour of stand-up <laughs> every night. <laughs> it's a dealist moment. Well, you are really on the rise now. I see the kinds of parties you're going to. It's fascinating. By I the way, I'm offended because I have uh, dinner in Spidey's bathroom every night. <laughs> so when's the last time you got to test out this new body of yours? Are you having sex with anybody? Uh, a little bit, not enough. I'm actually getting in the mood to like really kick it into high gear. I think you could get yourself a, a, a nice looking guy right now. The husband. What, what do you think? What is the type? The husband. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. it. Absolutely. No contact. No. Nothing. That's it. It's no, over. I wish him the best. I don't know where he is, but good right. for him. <laughs> what happened with the husband? The Jets didn't cover. Yes. <laughs> is that straight guy sports talk? <laughs> yes. Uh, um, go ahead. Okay, so what would be your type for me? Like Jewish dentist, <laughs> uh, athlete. Like what do you? What's my? I think you need a guy who has a regular job, you know, okay. a nice job, who's not consumed with show business, yeah. that you could take around. He wouldn't embarrass you at Cher's house. <laughs> you well, know. who is that guy? What is yeah, he really? doing? <clears throat> Where do you find If uh-huh. I knew that guy, I would fix you up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's Artie. Hi, Artie. <laughs> Hi, Kat. He said he Artie just embarrass. broke my heart and said he's seeing somebody new. Uh, yeah, Artie's uh, got a girlfriend. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, Artie. Yeah, I do. I have a girlfriend now. He does. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm seeing somebody new. Right. She's avoided. She doesn't like seeing me, but <laughs> yeah, so Kathy, yeah but, she's a lucky lady, Artie. Oh, wow! Well, thank you, Kathy's coming on to me. Jennifer, you're on the air. Hi, Howard. Hi. Hi. I just first time caller. I want to say I love you guys. I think you're the greatest. You make my morning like awesome. Thank my way you. to work. And Kathy, I love you. I saw you in, co- in your show last year in Orlando, and I just got an email. You're coming again on August fifteenth. So, thanks, I'm Jennifer. I'm well, on vacation August fifteenth. <laughs> But I just wanted to say you're great, and I love your show, and um, I totally agree with you about the Spidey thing. I've been watching that NBC thing. They think that they are... Giant stars. Oh, well, my God. But, yeah. but yet they've made a career out of being obnoxious kids who right. get on TV, so it's sort of working for them. Marianne, mm-hmm. go ahead. You're on. Howard, you're my share. Kathy, my husband <laughs> turned me on to you. He's totally in love with you. You have such a fantastic show. You came such a long way from the share birthday cake, and now you're rubbing elbows with Bette Midler, too, I see. Well, I, I, your husband is a straight guy who likes me? I can't he, believe this. He absolutely 
he loves you. It's incredible. He watches you and he laughs like he's on cloud nine and puts him in a good mood. You really All right, that's very nice in Dortmund. Chris, go ahead. You're on the air. Hey. Hey. (laughs) Shave your fucking pussy this morning with that filthy muck and gook. Yes, I did. Did you shave your pussy this morning, the gentleman? I don't do the full shave. I trim. I'm neat and tidy, but not bald. Right. So you you like to cover the lips a little bit. Yeah. All right. Is it red? (laughs) Yeah. It's red? Are you naturally red? Yeah. And is it a three alarm fire down there? Yeah. Oh, wow. call the whole squad. Debbie, go ahead. Hi. Oh, Kathy, I adore your show. Thanks. To let you know that I'm also on the D list. (laughs) I'm an author of a book that sold a million copies. It's in its 20th year of publication. (laughs) And yet, when my publisher wanted to do a 20th anniversary edition, um, they suddenly moved it back up to the 25th year. And I got my come up, I got my own back though because Jennifer Garner, yeah, you know her. She's at the epicenter of the Hollywood baby boom. Mm-hmm. Yes, she took my book and she read it at a Save the Children Foundation event. <laughs> and I just want to tell this is a shout out to Fred and to Artie and maybe to Howard too, Howard, because I gave Fred a copy of that book and Artie. All right, what's the book? book? I can see you looking for a plug. I mean, is your mama a llama? Is your mama a llama? Sold a million copies. There and you go. I'm living, you know, I'm not rich because I got screwed on my contract when I first signed up. And I'm a single mom, and I'm living in a hovel in Wantage, New Jersey, which is the rural part of New Jersey. And, Howard, I want to tell you, I adore you. I think you're the sexiest Thank guy. you very much. Boy, she goes on and on. You're very wow, blase about women telling you you're sexy, though. No, you're I'm like, not, yeah, yeah. I'm happy. I'm just still trying to recover from that whole explanation oh of the book God. and the reading. And the, By the like, way, you know I have a book coming out September 29th. Is that right? Absolutely. What, Whatever. What's Artie, the book? <laughs> you're an acclaimed author, Artie. Yeah, right, exactly. Ralph, go ahead quickly. God, did that woman have a point? No. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> do you, you have a point? You got a $2 million book deal, didn't you? Yeah. $2 million they gave you. So you got a wow. lot of money. You're, that's, uh, you're, you're doing all right. By the way, my book agent is now fired. All right. Uh-huh. Uh, go ahead, You Ralph. sold a lot of books already. Yeah. Kathy, always great on the show, uh, and it's really good that you've uh, lost weight and you got your body in shape, but really, <laughs> you shouldn't be running around in a bikini at uh, award shows and whatnot. I mean, it's, you It know, was a joke. There's an episode of my life on the D-list where Paris Hilton was trying to give me lessons on Young Hollywood, right? and she bought me um, a little bikini, and then we shot a scene at a pool, and I had to be I next see. to Paris yeah, Hilton in a bikini. nobody knows all that. All you see are these pictures of you parading around a bikini. I went to a gay award show. I, I mean, the gays like that stuff. In other words, you're a comedian, and you were right. trying to do something funny of as course. opposed to taking yourself seriously. Yes, she's of one course, of these very much. She's in shape, and now she thinks she's super hot. You're not. It's not that hot. I'm not going to sex you then. Right. You're, yeah, Ralph, you're not getting the nude pictures then. <laughs> but Ralph makes a point. I lost some weight, and I'm not running around in a Speedo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> By the way, gay award show is a little redundant. Are you, are you friends with uh, Paris Hilton? Is that someone who you I'm know? Her, I'm her BFF. That's, That's huge. Mm-hmm. She's huge. She's got some body, though, right? She, she has an insane body, absolutely. Right, now, right. did you, you know that the huge is the new hot, right? Yeah. Right. Well, no, we play yeah. it here all the time. Okay, good. Because well, the first she, time she said that to me, I told her to fuck off. We stretched it out. <laughs> we, I thought she meant I was fat. Right. We, stretched the, we stretched the huge out to like two huge. minutes once. Huge. Huge. <laughs> yeah. She's got. She's pretty proud of her new word. She only gets a new word like every four years. But yeah, this it is works. the new thing. Yeah. Huge. huge. Yeah. Huge. Nice, nice face, flat ass, good blowjob. All right. Yeah. Let's uh, just say that Kathy Griffin is on a roll. When are you going to see Cher naked? She's got to get nude in front of you at some point. Um, very soon. Very soon. Yeah, you're, we'll you're get some girl-on-girl girl action. <laughs> Come back and talk to me when oh, you do absolutely. that. Oh, absolutely. We'll uh, be back right after. Okay. Thanks, Kathy. Great Thank seeing you. you. We'll be back right after these words. Bye. Kathy. Hello. How'd it go? It was fun. Really fun, as always. So, you know, you're going to all these parties now, hanging out with Cher. <laughs> sure. Howard doesn't seem to think you're... uh, Howard doesn't think Cher likes it, but I disagree. Just because she calls him an asshole doesn't mean she doesn't like him. (laughs) It's an endearment for her. Why, do you know anything? No, but I I remember when she used to say that David Letterman was an asshole, but she's friendly with him now. So I think she's, you know, just joking around. (laughs) So you had a good time today? Always, absolutely. Always have a good time. All right.